Welcome to I'm tired and kind of depressed. It's great. <laughs> uh, I'm not depressed. I'm okay. I know a few people have been worrying about me because I mentioned that I hadn't eaten. Um, I'm fine. I've been dealing with it for a long time. I've been dealing with it since 2013. Um, I don't have a full on eating disorder. I have depression and I have anxiety and all of that just piles on um, when I get upset. That's it. That's all. That's all that is. I know how to deal with it. I know how to stop myself from spiraling. Um, I know how to de-stress. Uh, this has become a very popular method for me to de-stress is just talking to a camera because I have I think I mentioned it today, like when I write I skip over words and I hadn't noticed it as much before and I, th I think it's because I had a lull period where I just wasn't writing anything and now that I've gotten back into studying I'm noticing it more because I'll just write and I'll skip over things, um, like skip over words which becomes problematic because I can write I don't like X so I don't like racism and then that will translate into I do because I've left out don't completely um, and like in my mind even if I read it back I don't see that I've missed anything until after I've posted it and like half an hour later I'll read it back or somebody will point it out and I'll be like well fuck um, so I, I don't know if that's linked uh, I you know my mind just buzzes at a thousand, that's why I was telling that story. My, my mind just goes at a thousand miles an hour and I don't know how to slow it down. So when I'm thinking that fast, like it doesn't occur to me that I may have just skipped things or like when I'm, I'm feeling bad or I'm feeling emotional, I spiral. Um, I spiral very quickly because I'm thinking so, so fast about so many horrible things. And uh, to be honest, nothing horrible happened. I did something very cathartic. I did something very emotional. I let something that had been weighing on me for many, many years out. And I will link you to that when it comes out. Um, but I had done that and it just brought back a lot of bad memories for me. Um, and nobody's to blame. It's just how my brain is wired. Um, you know, maybe I'll go in, go into it in a different podcast, but uh, sorry podcast sorry I recorded a podcast that's why I said podcast my brain is all over the place please forgive me I've been writing a paper for four days and I haven't got it right <laughs> so I apologize um, I recorded a podcast and it will be out soon and I will tweet it out so follow me on Twitter um, all the links are going to be in the description uh, and I'll put a little text in later on in post uh, on the screen but I wanted to do a positive video today I'm just taking a little break from my coursework which honestly I've never found stressful before but I think because doing that podcast is just making everything more difficult it's making eating difficult it's making sleeping difficult it's making everything difficult so I I wanted to do something positive and to be honest I know I tweeted and said that I probably wouldn't be able to make a video this week but I really want to I really want to and I'm going to um, and I want to make a positive video and I wanted to talk about love and I don't want to run about love I don't want to fight anyone on love like I it Valentine's Day is tomorrow so people have been talking and I've been listening and I've been chiming in every now and then but because my mood's been so low I just haven't really been talking that much um <laughs> I think the most I've been doing is just making self-deprecating jokes which is always great um but it you know I don't even know where to go from there love for me has been very very difficult I was in I think my favorite quote about love ever of all time it comes from a show called How I Met Your Mother, which in my opinion is the greatest sitcom ever created. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it and you need to shut this off so I don't give you any spoilers and you need to go watch it now. It's like nine seasons. 
you have to see it. It's amazing. I love it from tip to tail. It is the most amazing sitcom ever created. Um, the ending is perfect. The beginning is perfect. It is a perfect sitcom. Um, and the best quote about love that I know of comes from that show. And the quote is, is that love is the best thing we do. Love is the best thing we do as human beings. Um, and maybe that's kind of irrelevant to Valentine's Day. I think a lot of people see Valentine's Day as like a, uh, a gimmick or a, an event to show off your love life or whatever. I, I mean, it, it's meaningless to me. I never celebrated it until maybe like a year ago. Even then it wasn't that serious because my birthday is in February. So I kind of just celebrate it together. Um, if, if at all, but I wanted to talk about love because I, I, I feel like people can relate to my experience and I want people to, you know, it, it's so unhealthy for us to go about our lives and not talk about things that, you know, you feel like you're ashamed, you should be ashamed of. Um, and I don't, I don't want to continue that tradition. I want to talk about everything and anything. I, you know, when you go through something difficult and then you don't talk about it, it's one of the most unhealthy things you can possibly do to yourself. Um, you know, your life is a cup. You can only push so many emotions in there before that cup just spills over. And that's where I am right now. And my cup is full. I cannot take any more emotions and I just want to be happy. But I know I have a lot of feelings and events that I haven't confronted and it's getting to me. <laughs> it's getting to me and it's like ex exposing itself in really weird ways where I won't be able to sleep or I won't, I, I won't feel hungry. I won't feel hungry for days. Um, when my mother was ill, for example, um, I, I don't think I ate unless I was physically forced to eat. Like I was pushed into eating. I don't think I ate. Like I would drink tons of tea and I would like nibble on biscuits, but I don't ever think that I had a full meal of my own free will. <laughs> I was, I was pushed to eat. Sometimes food I didn't, first of all, didn't want to eat because it was going off. Um, thanks, Dad. Um, but also just like I, I couldn't feel hunger because I was always so stressed or upset or depressed and I just didn't want to do anything. Um, and I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. I just told a sad story for no reason. Like this is where I'm at. This is, this is how my, like, my spiraling sort of manifests and I, I, I should probably stop and I'll just get back into the topic of love because at least that's in some way positive but growing up um I think there was always a part of me that didn't believe in love I I, I felt like there was a part of me that didn't believe that like a concept of love really existed um it was just a name for something that people did um, or showed, uh, or felt, and it wasn't a real thing. Um, and that had, I think, I don't think that had anything to do with my religion. Like, I don't want to ascribe that to my, to Islam. Like, I know I ascribe a lot of things to Islam, but I don't think that that, um, really dark thought came from Islam. I, I, I think that I developed that based on my family and based on how we were built up. I, never felt love in my family and maybe that's a, a broad assumption <laughs> to make but I can only I can only say what I've experienced um but like I'm not saying that my family isn't loving I'm just saying that I never felt that love like whatever they did to show it 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 didn't translate as love to me um so for example, like we weren't a very touchy feely family. I used to hug my siblings and kiss my siblings and play with my siblings all the time. Um, and I would try to show affection that way. But for example, my mother, I don't think she was very affectionate to me. I, I only remember her hugging me like twice in my life, 
in my lifetime. My dad never hugged us. He's never hugged me. I don't remember. No, that's not true. He hugged me one time when, um, after my mother had passed away and we were seeing her body and I think he just needed that. Like that was more for him than it was for me. I didn't see it as an, as an act of love towards me. It, for me, it was more an act of love on my part, comforting him. I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, I, it's just how I feel. I'm not, I'm not blaming anyone, you know, it's, it's just how I feel. So I grew up in this world where I didn't feel like I was loved fuck's sake I don't want to cry just Jesus Christ why why did you go to cry all the time <laughs> stop this um <sighs> fuck's sake. this is my reality anyways I was also the oldest so it uh, I didn't get a lot of attention um any kind of attention I got it was from friends or from teachers or from my siblings. I, I never really got attention from my parents. Uh, my father and I had a very interesting relationship where we would talk a lot, but we would, I, I feel like he would talk at me and I would respond and he would just wouldn't hear me. And for me, that was conversation. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have a deep, meaningful relationship with either of my parents. I thought I did with my dad. That flew out the window as soon as, you know, my mom was gone. So, you know, I, I didn't grow up with love. That's my whole point. I'm sorry if I am depressing you all. <laughs> I, I didn't grow up with love. And it, it, it made me feel really weird about, like, when I saw uh, sitcoms or when I saw um things in movies at home <laughs> because i didn't go to the cinema <laughs> um things in movies or in cartoons about how people convey their love and it just for me like i could never relate to it i didn't get it um or like when uh, someone told me that their mom was their best friend like i never got it like how can your mom be your best friend how does she even have time for you because my my mom never had time for me and again, that's not me blaming her, you know, there was six of us, me growing up, and she had to deal with my dad as well, who was an absolute head case. But, um, you know, it, it, it all comes down to what you feel and how you consolidate it all. Like, how do you make sense of it? And I think that's what I'm trying to do. Um... I don't know how long this video is going to be. Please leave if it's too long and it's too depressing. I don't want to be responsible for anybody having like whatever I'm going through because you listen to me for 40 minutes to an hour talking about nothing and how I'm so upset. You know, this is just very cathartic for me to talk into a camera that I know won't judge me. Just, that's it. Um, and the... <laughs> The good thing about the internet, I think, is that I think people in the past, when they have these thoughts of how they used to think, they can like sort of brush it aside because they can't confirm that they thought those things because those things don't exist anywhere. Well, thankfully for me, <laughs> I actually wrote something uh, about love uh, like in 2014. <laughs> And it was like a bitter literature student um, who was talking about love and Valentine's Day and was just very bitter about it. And that's how I, I used to be about love because I, I, I feel like a part of me didn't believe it existed because I had never experienced it in the way that I am currently experiencing it from my friends and from my boyfriend and from his family and one of my friends families who honestly like she's she's basically family she's ba she and her parents are basically family at this point because i stay over at their house you know there's no need for introduction that i'm always welcome at their place i call her mom mom i call her dad dad you know it's <laughs> it's a family at this point um and i i never had that bond before so it 
it's weird to me is is what i'm saying like i i can't i i can't relate what i used to feel to how i feel now and that that's fucking with me for some reason um but i found this and i thought i would like i'm not gonna read you the whole thing because honestly it's it's really cringe um but you can find it i wrote a it, it was like a really short piece where i would just write out my ideas in a really sarcastic way because i'm british and we don't convey things easily we have to be really salty about everything um and i had written it and it's if you know i don't even know if you can access it really unless you have an account on the site but it's through Mavellis, which is a site i used to write on and the <laughs> the book it, it's just like two chapters or something i didn't really continue it because i even i recognize my cringe uh, the book that I wrote was called The Rogue Doctrine because my username at that time was Midnight Rogue. Um, and I think it, it's, it still is Midnight Rogue. It still is Midnight Rogue on my fellas. Um, but I had written it and I wanted to share it with you. I'm, I'm waff waffling a lot. Please forgive me. <laughs> I am in a state. <laughs> and no makeup. Hair hasn't been washed in a few days. It, I'm in a state. <laughs> um, so we start off with something that's just wonderful i start off with a william shakespeare quote because i was so woke back then. <laughs> and it was the line from twelfth night and i've actually read a lot of shakespeare i've read i, I haven't read all his plays but i've read a fair few of his plays it, i had to fill my time up with something back then because um well, actually, that's not true. I was reading a lot of Quran. I was doing a lot of prayers. I was very religious back then, but I also really enjoyed literature. Um, and I was studying all these literature pieces. And if I had free time, I would just read because movies weren't an option unless I was like watching them in secret or some like one of my cousins was showing me them. So it. <laughs> so I started with the quote, uh, if music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting, the appetite may sicken and so die. And I interpreted that to mean love is a bad thing. That I, I interpreted that to mean love is a bad thing. Like it makes you sick, it drives you insane, that's what love is. Um, and yeah. <laughs> He, I also wrote a bit about Romeo and Juliet and how I commented on how Shakespeare killed them both off through suicide uh, because love just drives you crazy. That's what I thought love was. That that was my percept. That's fucking dark, but that's what I thought love was. Love was just this this like disease that just drove you insane and um, did this to you. Like it was so, such a powerful, compelling emotion that it, it wasn't a good thing. Um... And I tried to define it by saying that <laughs> love had like a thousand definitions in a standard dictionary. I think it listed as over 18 definitions. Um, and I wrote that love has no set definition and it, you know, it wasn't just merely an emotion or a feeling or a hunch, but it was like a really diverse thing. Um, and I also wrote uh, a little bit about Valentine's Day and how Valentine's Day is a hoax and it's it's like a it's a gimmick because it celebrates the death of a saint and I was really I was I considered myself really practicing then and I just saw that as like a as like a pagan thing to do because Christians it was celebrating a saint so um yeah, I, I called it the day of St. Valentine's execution, or more optimistically named Valentine's Day. It's really bitter, but this is what I mean. Like, I, I'm i such a different person. I, I experience life in such a different way than I did back then. Like, I'm, like I, when I wrote this, I was being petty about the shape of a standard, like, heart and saying how it wasn't the shape of a real heart and it's meant to resemble like a woman's body like her breasts or her butt and like that's such a misogynistic thing to do and like I, I, I'm I pretty sure I added an element of like my Islamicness there um, and I didn't see the significance of celebrating uh, a day where a man got executed 
for and I didn't actually write why he got executed. He got, for, to my knowledge anyway, he got executed because he was marrying people against the law of the Romans or something. Um, and I actually wrote here that I'm not one of those people who are nihilistic about love and that I do believe in love, but I don't think it's uh, positively portrayed or something like that. Um, yeah, I believe, like, marriage was the thing that created love. Like, love doesn't exist in terms of love at first sight and things like that. Um, which, love at first sight is still something I'm very sceptical about. But in terms of my current relationship, it kind of was love at first sight. Because I literally messaged him, like, I, I do online dating, I can't, <laughs> my previous life as a Muslim does not allow me to accept men approaching me. It's it's like a complex I have. I can't have men approaching me. I get very defensive and very, in a sense, scared or very, like, protective of myself. Uh, if, if you catch me drunk and you're hitting on me, there's going to be a problem. Uh, like, I'm a very masculine girl. I will fight you. Um, and not to say that I would win, but I would definitely start a fight um, if I am drunk. And it just, like, all of this, all of this, like, I used to write poems, I quoted a poem in, I'm not reading that, that shit, fuck that, I'm not reading that out loud in, the, like, you can, you can go and read this, I will happily link the, the, li <laughs> link this in the description below, but I refuse to read that poem, Jesus Christ, um, and I thought that, yeah, this was another thing, like, because of my Muslimness back then, or my, you know, whatever you want to call it, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would think that I wasn't very religious for doing this, like, being able to write on the internet, because it didn't exist in the 7th century, so uh, you weren't that religious, and talking about love and whatever, but I used to think that arranged marriages was the way to go, because then you're you're placed with someone and you make it work and that's how love worked like love was just like a process that just came out of being with someone and I don't know I, I, I've I definitely changed that opinion because biggest example in my life my parents were arranged married and they were terrible for each other no matter how hard my mom <laughs> tried to make it work they were terrible for each other and because of my culture not necessarily islam before all of you muslims jump down my throat and say that divorce is permissible in islam because of my culture she could just not leave that relationship it was such a it was a thing that was considered taboo to get a divorce because you didn't get along with someone especially if you had kids with that person um, and there were six of us, so she would have had to take a lot of baggage away from from that marriage. Um, and I think at the time, like, religion really does sort of blind you to, um, to experimenting with new ideas, to experimenting with anything, you know, it just, it's just a guideline for how you should live your life. It, it tells you not to experiment and if you experiment you should feel guilty about and ask for forgiveness you know that that's the whole point that's why that exists um and after leaving because i lost faith in god i didn't necessarily like my my reason for leaving wasn't necessarily like a i hate islam now kind of reason i just lost faith in god um and as soon as i, lo I lost faith in faith uh, as soon as i lost faith in god my you know my need to experience things sort of kicked in because then if there's no god there's no hell or heaven if there's no hell or heaven this is the only life i get to experience things and that's so important to me now and i you know i started dating i started seeing people my first boyfriend was completely long distance he was online he lived in america um we did meet up eventually but he was all wrong for me uh, and I discovered that I had severe daddy issues. Uh, not only from the fact that my dad was a piece of shit, but also because I had such a strong tie to God, and that kind of messed me up in the long term. Um, 
and what, what do I think of love now? I my first boyfriend definitely started me on the path to what love was like I felt like I loved him and I felt like he loved me and it was something that I had never experienced before and I had long tearful emotional conversations about it with him um, and I've rediscovered that with my current boyfriend who I've only had two boyfriends surprise surprise for all of you people who are saying that I left Islam to have sex and and parade the town with my nakedness um, but I yeah I've I've definitely learned to discover that sort of love but also a love from a family aside from my own so my ex-boyfriend's family was very loving towards me they some of them still are very loving towards me um and my current boyfriend's family is a loving family towards me which is something I've never experienced like from my culture I've never once seen someone apologize to someone else in my family I've never heard anybody say sorry. I've never seen a true, genuine, any kind of apology, even a fake one. I haven't seen one in my family, which, you know, I feel like an apology is not just an admission that you're willing to accept that you're wrong, but it's also an admission that, look, I love you. I'll apologize. You know, it's a, it's a form of respect that I genuinely think that the South Asian community lacks. Um, and, you know, um, maybe that's a broad generalization. Maybe I'm over judging people, but I, from all, all my life, living in an Asian Muslim family, seeing and talking to other Asian girls, and you know, recognizing their experience, it's a problem that needs to be addressed. Learn to apologize. Apologizing, you know, alongside admitting that maybe you were wrong, it's not defeat. It's not shameful you have to learn to apologize it is a sign of love to apologize and when i saw these fam both of my my ex and my current boyfriend they're both white in their family apologies are so quick like they can fight for half an hour but as soon as that argument is over within five to ten minutes they're apologizing to each other and they're recognizing what they did wrong and they're moving on with their lives. They're not holding on to shit. And for me, that's love. You know, being able to apologize and being honest with the people you love, that's love to me. Um, making you feel welcome, you know, knowing that they appreciate you, showing affection for you, that's love. You know, telling you you're wrong, telling you you're wrong when you are absolutely out of your fucking mind, that's love. Like, I've done that to people I love. People have said the same to me when I was doing something crazy. But, you know, the, supporting you when you have a goal or when you really need to get something done or when you're upset, it that's why I recognise as love. And it's it's something that is so foreign to me. Like, it hit, it still hits me in the face. I've been dating my current boyfriend for nearly nine months eight eight nine months i i'm sorry ed if you're watching this <laughs> my brain is all like all over the wall right now <laughs> but it, it it's been a while and it anytime he shows me a sign of affection it still really like hits me in the face like i can't believe the the emotion that wells up inside me it's really weird um and I don't know if anyone can relate to that. Maybe I'm the one crazy person in the world who's just never felt that until they hit their 20s. Like, maybe that's me. that's just me. I don't know. Um, but it's just crazy to think that, you, you know, five to eight years ago, I didn't know what love was. I just didn't know what it was. And I part of me didn't think it existed and I wanted to make a little comment about Valentine's Day but I don't think I have to you know I've said my opinion on celebrations before life is too short not to celebrate things not to find excuses to celebrate things and I know some people go overboard by you know making it the one day that they love their partner um or showing that they love their partner rather um but any excuse 
give me any excuse to send someone a card or buy them a gift. It makes me feel so good. Like, if I could spend all my money on just buying other people gifts, I would. I w if I could survive doing that, I would do that all the time because it fulfills my need to just show people I love them. I think that's the biggest, probably the biggest way I show that I love people besides just listening to their problems. Um, and I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I love Valentine's Day. It's definitely not my favorite holiday, but I don't know. I f I feel like me being a young person and you know being a little emo kid that you know, hated their parents and hated their life and, you know, I didn't hate my parents. I don't think I ever really hated my parents. Not until 2015 where I just lost my shit on my dad. But, um, you know, me being like that and being so bitter because I didn't understand something. Don't be bitter. Try not to be bitter about things that you don't understand. Um, and ad admit that you don't love you don't know what love is because i honestly truly didn't know what it was it it was it was beyond my scope of experience <laughs> um and you know i wish i had hugged my mum more like i definitely regret that but i didn't i i didn't do that because it wasn't a part of our family i never saw people hugging people i never saw people kissing people in my family ever only kissing children that was it um as a sign of not in a weird way like as a sign of affection um kissing and hugging children under the age of like five uh, and after that it's like uh, you're cut off and uh, i don't get it I, I don't understand it um you know anytime my mum would see me upset she would literally tell me to just shove it down and get on with it which was you know her way of dealing with things didn't really it's not really working out for me right now so I mean you know life is too short for you to pussyfoot around showing people you love them fair I think that's fair hug your parents hug your children hug the people you love show them you love them because you don't know when you're gonna lose them and that's gonna make me cry so I'm gonna stop I'm going to stop there. Um, happy Valentine's Day. Um, thank you for your love and support. Don't worry about me. I am fine. Tomorrow, I think I'll be a, I'll, I'll be a hundred times better than I am now. Um, I'm, I've more or less cried everything out of my system already. I don't think I'm going to cry again. If I do, I, I will. It's beyond my control at this point. Um, well, that's another thing. Don't be ashamed of crying. You gotta cry. Just go cry. Just get on with it. It's like it, I don't know why people are so weird about crying. It's it's like holding in a laugh. You know, like why would you do that? Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for your love and support. I will leave any of the links that I need to leave uh, in the description. Make sure you check out um, out of the fold podcast. He has. He has a few podcasts with ex, ex Muslims, ex Christians, ex Hindus. Uh, he did a podcast with Apostate Prophet. I love Apostate Prophet's work, so you know it's good. Um, and I will see you in the next one. And I hope you have a great Valentine's Day. You know, hug everyone you love, give presents to everyone you love. Um, and, you know, Give a big ol' hug to your pets, unless you have fish. Fish don't need hugs. Fish need to be left alone. Um, but thank you, and I will see you in the next one. I know I already said that. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.